Hey everybody, Backpack Hack here coming at you with another trail tip. Got a lot to cover, so I made some crib notes. So uh, I beg your pardon if I have to refer to my notes because I want to make sure that everything I want to get into this video actually gets in. If I try to memorize it, there's something I'm going to miss. So let's get started. For the last several years, I've known I needed to get into amateur radio as a form of uh, grid down and SHTF communications. We can't always rely on our cell phones. Uh, my history with radio goes back to my teen years when uh, the CB craze was hitting in the 70s and everybody had a CB radio and I think that's the reason my parents allowed me to get into CB radio because I had a base unit on my desk in my room with a great big antenna on the roof and I could talk to friends you know, 15, 20 miles away and I think they did that for two reasons. First off, they were supportive parents. They, they, they supported whatever I wanted to do. And second off, it kept them from either having to get what was called a teen line or a second phone line and kept me from tying up the regular house phone. And when that craze died down and cell phones started to come out, I kind of got out of radio. But when I got into prepping, I realized that getting into amateur radio is something that I needed to get into. Um, I didn't grow up with anybody who was into amateur radio that I knew. It was all CB or nothing. Years ago, I was like a lot of preppers. I got some of these ubiquitous UV5R Baofeng radios, and I've got them programmed with the cable, used the computer for that. But for the past several years, I knew I needed to step up my game. So I wanted to dip my toe into the amateur radio pond. And I was always impressed by people who would either take ammo cans or Pelican cases and put radios in them, ham radios, just field kits that they could just bring out into the field and start using. So I wanted to do that. Well, a friend of mine back in November of last year texted me a link to an Amazon lightning sale for radio. And I looked at it and I was like, you know, for a hundred bucks, that's not a bad deal. And I asked him, well, he was asking me about it and I said, I don't know anything about him. Um, I'm, I'm totally in the dark about ham radio, but I knew I wanted to get into it, so I thought, I'm just going to go ahead and drop the dime on this radio, and I bought it. Now, knowing that I had the radio wasn't going to be enough, because I needed other things. I needed things like coax and connectors. I needed an SWR meter, because I knew the SWR meter I've got somewhere would not work at the frequencies these things work at. Uh, I knew I needed an antenna. I needed all that stuff. So I was starting from scratch. So as, as I, once I ordered the radio, I started to think, what am I going to do with this? How am I going to build this? And I was always impressed with these ammo can or hammo cans as they're sometimes called. So I started to do some, some uh, pre-engineering about what I'm going to do with this radio once I got it in. This was just a drawing that I did to kind of get my brain working. And... When you get online and look at some of these ammo can and pelican case builds, some of them are absolutely smashing. Some look like crap. Uh, I'm sure they all work just fine. Some of them, they've uh, just done them by hand at home. Others have uh, uh, CAD programs on their computers and they're using CNC machines. But I wanted something that I could set up here in the house and kind of use as a base station, but still make it portable, just a go radio. And so I finally settled on an ammo can. Now once I ordered the radio, I started to qualify what I wanted. I wanted things like, obviously I want a voltmeter and an ammeter, so I can monitor the battery and how much power I'm using. I wanted, obviously, an on-off switch. Some of these kits that you see have an internal battery pack and some require an external power source. I wanted an internal power so source. I wanted something I could just sit down, open up, hook up an antenna, turn it on, and I'm on the air. Uh, having USB ports would be nice, so I could either charge my cell phone or something like that. I also needed, of course, power inlets. I needed a way to power the outlet from an external source as well as charge the battery. And those were my requirements. And after I got the radio, I started looking. It's like, you know, I decided to go with an ammo can build. And this is it right here. This is my ammo can, or my hammo can, or as I call it, my Radigo. Now, you may think, well, it just looks like an ordinary ammo can. Well, it is. It's an actual ammo can. 
and let me take the lid off of it. And this is what I call the Radigo. You can see I've got my radio. Here is my volt and amp meter. I've got USB ports, my power supply. I've got an SO239 external port for an antenna. I have my charge and my power inlet fuses for both. And I've also got a couple other things in here we'll get to a little bit later. Now I was originally going to build it using the ammo can. But what I was going to do is I knew I needed to drill some holes in this to support all this stuff inside. And then I was going to simply coat the whole thing with like a truck bed liner. But then I thought, you know, if I did that, I would have to ruin that coating if I ever wanted to get back into this. So I was trying to figure out how I was going to do that. I know some people weld things in here. I don't have a welder. And even if I did, it would probably ruin the finish of the ammo can. So I thought about it for a couple of days, and I came up with what I consider a rather unique solution. And that is to build the ammo can inside the ammo can. In other words, I had a metal box made that fits inside a standard 50 cal ammo can. Being an electrician, I have access to other trades in the building trades, and one of them is a HVAC contractor who has a CAD program on their machine that drives a CNC plasma cutter. And I just went in with a drawing, said here's what I want to build, and within 20 minutes I was walking out with the parts to do this. Now there's two parts to this. There is obviously the external can, and, and that's what has all the screws in it. You can see some of the screws there. As well as this piece here. They manufactured this piece and bent it for me. Then I sat down at home, drilled everything out, installed all the pieces, wired everything up, and now I have a complete ammo can, or hammo can, or what I call the Radigo, that I can simply slide in to the ammo can, and I'm ready to go. Now, I have a several antennas that I can hook up here. I built a tri-band since this is a tri-band radio, I built a tri-band antenna, a copper cactus, that I put on the back of my house, ran the coax inside, and I can hook it up to here. I also have a portable two-meter J-pole, you can see behind me here, that breaks down into three pieces for portability. I also built a little two-meter ladder line Slim Jim, and if nothing else, let me pull the end, the, show you how this sets up. The microphone stores up here in the top, and this space up here serves four functions. It serves as a storage space for the microphone. It allows me to reach in and pull this internal can out. It also helps dissipate the heat that the radio generates. I didn't want to enclose this radio down behind something like this and have the heat build up and be a problem. And since the speaker is on the top of this radio, it works great as a sound chamber. So there's four functions to this space up here. I ordered some magnetic mounts for the microphone. Get this spun around here, plugged in. And all I got to do is turn it on. And I have my radio going. Now, I obviously need an antenna. Now, I could hook up this antenna or this antenna or uh, my external antenna. But one thing I did purchase, a couple things I purchased, were these little adapters. And one of them is a PL259 to an SMA. So if I needed to, I could take one of these off. Lay this down. New digital technology and everything else. I'm just going to turn that off. I don't think we need to listen to everybody. And I can be 
on the air. Uh, if I wanted to maintain it straight up and down, I bought a 90 degree adapter so I could stand this up and use it uh, at a table like this. So I have lots of options for antennas. Once I had this built, there were two things I added. One is, I would have liked to have had a cigarette lighter because I can get power out of this connection and these connections are the same that I use for my DIY power well and my solar panel. So I could drive this off of uh, my, my power well, I can charge it off of solar. These are the exact same connections that I have on those. So I decided instead of putting in, trying to wrestle in a cigarette lighter plug, I went with something like this and I simply put a small DC power port down here on the bottom. So all I got to do is plug this in and now I have a cigarette lighter plug. The other thing that I realized about this, get this unplugged because it's in there awful tight. Oh well. The other thing I re realized was this radio, when you plug in the programming cord, does not hijack the radio. In other words, when you plug this into the back of the radio, you can still use the radio. The only time your radio is technically offline is when there's communications going on between the computer and the radio. It's not like these radios where you plug in the uh, programming cable, you can't use the radio. This is not like that. You plug this in, the radio is still usable. So I thought, why not put a cable to a data port here? And that's exactly what I've done is I've taken a eighth inch or 3.5 millimeter tip ring sleeve or TRS or three line or stereo plug which is basically the panel mount version of this so I can take and plug this in right to here plug this into my computer and I can program it I thought that was the slickest thing I just wanted to come up with this quick little video to explain to you what I did. Hopefully the pictures have helped you and an explanation on what I've done here. Um, I'm real happy with this. I can ping repeaters with my external antenna 15-20 miles away. Um, with this antenna, this is limited to 10 watts, which is nice, which the low power on this is 10 watts. And I can still ping towers 10 miles away with this antenna. In fact, I can ping the, the same towers with this. So that is my Radigo project. Um, hopefully this has given you a little bit of uh, incentive to maybe build your own. So this is Backpack Hat coming at you with this trail tip. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment on my videos. Be safe out there, and I'll see you out on the trail.